Good evening, and welcome to the Wellington Skyrocket Coaches Show. This is our half along with head coach Wade Williams. And once again, we're here at the Rocket House where the Booster Club uh, uh, just wrapped up its weekly meeting, as he does each and every week. Coach Williams has taken some time out of his busy schedule to join us to talk some Skyrocket football. Welcome, sir. It's great to have you. Thanks, Larry. We appreciate you doing this every week. Yeah. Uh, Coach, long story short, after uh, lost to Memphis in the district opener and extends the role of Jack Rebels, you got well this week after you got to the tune of 56 to nothing. Nice. It's, it was fun. It was one of the fun games, and everybody got to participate. Uh, we spent a lot of time during the week working on fundamentals and things that we do. And, you know, that, that part of it's paying off and things that we're going to need on down the road in the playoffs. Well, as we always uh, do, we'll ask you to break it out a little bit for us. Uh, uh, we want to also extend the invitation to folks as we do every week at halftime to uh, remember or not come down to the Booster Club, watch a, uh, watch a video of the varsity JV junior high when, when they have games. The coaches kind of uh, do some commentary on that, that it, it's a good deal. But uh, uh, we do that every week. But uh, you break that film down for us a little bit. But uh, let's start with the defense where, despite not having your uh, starting nose tackle in the lineup, one month longer or more maybe for a while. Right. In spite of that, the Rocket defense, and in particular the defensive line, just pretty well dominated. I don't have any final stats at, uh, in front of me, but at halftime, Rawls had something like 15 yards of total offense and 100 or less on the game. Yeah, you, you look at those stats and you look at the tackle category, there was a ton of names. Not not a lot of tackle, but a lot of kids participated. But, you know, uh, Kate Hunter had to fill in down there in the nose guard position for, for Juan. And Kate has played down in there in the Hollis game, if you think back. And he does a good job. And he did a good job. And uh, uh, Drake Welch and Brendan Stevens were the two tackles that kind of we try to piece that thing in there together. And then uh, Seven Wheeler's out with an injury in Trenton. Uh, Cofer had to play that nine technique. And they, all those guys did a good job. Uh, you know, uh, Emilio Bermuda is there. Emilio came in for uh, Caden later in the, there in the second half. And, you know, he, he really used his hands well. We, we watched the film with kids today and bragged on him how far he's come. And, uh, I, I was just proud of everybody that got to play, got out there. And, and everybody trying to get better. And that's the one thing we're trying to do is show me what you can do. You want to get on the field, show me what you can do. I think you kind of answered my next question, but uh, I was going to say on the defensive side, who are some of the individuals who really graded out especially high and maybe some that came off the bench too. An awful lot of kids getting a chance to see extended playing time. Right. You know, some of those guys, uh, I, I think, you, you know, uh, Donald Stevens, I'm looking at him. Right. Uh, of course, Caden Hunter has played some down there. We, we need we need him to come on there. And of course, for, for this year and for next year, as we go through these things, watching those kids play, we're trying to figure out that next year's team. And so he did a good job. Emilio used his hands well down there, I mentioned earlier. Uh, and then the line, linebacker play, Oscar Rodriguez, he came on and made, made some good tackles there. And uh, Weston Wright, the starting linebacker, and, and Jose Tello, those two guys. Uh, I don't remember exactly how many. I think they had eight, but they weren't in there very many plays. But the, you know, they've been racking up 10, 11, 12 tackles right. a game, but they were quite a half. And that's right. And then, the, you know, then the second half just flew by. So uh, you're right. I think there was. We've been averaging somewhere around yeah. 70, deep, you know, some 70 plays with the run and shoot offenses. So uh, we were about 37. So uh, it's quite different. Well, over on the offense, it appeared like, well, the front line was equally dominant, and they went both the running game and the passing game, do pretty much what you wanted to do. I think you had six or seven different players hit pay dirt on the night, so you were able to spread the wealth around some. We are, you know, uh, when you get in a position like that, in a game like that, you want to you want to start working on things that we're not very good at, or things that we need to get better at, or or maybe we hadn't even seen, you know. So uh, uh, we'll start with Caden Hunter. You know, we want him to be able to run the ball inside and protect the football. He did a good job of that. Had 151 yards. Uh, Jalen Rowland, we want to see him run tough. He on the outside, he did a good job. We want to see Oscar uh, Rodriguez block, a lead block. He backs up James Kilgore, who. You know, James is pretty solid, had some injuries, but we want to see Oscar if he's going to be the man to step into that role. And, and, it, and just so on and so on from there. But those kids, the, the running back positions, I thought they did good. Uh, you know, Jose started off the night when, when everybody was fresh, and I thought he did his normal, normal thing, just run off tackle behind me. But you know, of all the great things uh, Jose Tellez has done this year, that was his first touchdown pass reception. Yeah. You know, of the year yeah. that, that was kind of neat. Uh, by halftime, Hunter had 130 yards to go on with Jose 61 yards. Luke was already nine for 12 
at halftime, I think he ended up 10 for 14, something like right, that. Right. Uh, uh, re, uh, on the receiving end, uh, Richardson and uh, uh, Arturo Tellez turned in typical performances for them. They just continue to grow and blossom, don't they? That's exactly right. You know, one thing we're going to have to do as a team, uh, uh, at times you're going to double Arturo Tellez and, and Cooper Richardson and Weston Wright and some other receivers, you're going to have to pick up the slack. And those are things that we try to, we try to get that involved right now. You Andrew Riet, right, just need to get exactly. a little bit. Uh, and then you had some guys carrying the ball. Uh, uh, I did an interview with him some weeks ago, but then you've got Mauricio Herrera uh, carrying the ball and what, had a 10-yard run or something like that. Uh, you know, we, we call that throwing that guy bone. He comes out and he gets out there on scout team. Randy, Mauricio, and those guys, they're the first guy up in your face going, where do I line up? And he goes against Jose Tellez every day and he is the opponent. So whenever I get a chance, to throw one their, their way, I do. Uh, that's great. I know that they got a big kick out of it. Uh, during the course of the game, my broadcast partner, Drew Taylor, made mention of a conversation that you and he had during the week prior. Uh, it was after the Memphis loss and leading up to the Rawls win. And he said that you related, uh, so he related something that you told him about what a great week of practice it had been. What was it uh, about the practice week that made it special? Well, the first thing that I noticed, the kids, uh, their focus in the practice and they knew that they had to get better and, and you know they could have very easily come out on money and drug around but they were ready to go to work and we called for we went through special teams first man they're jumping out there and they know that this is an area that we got to work out which we felt like you know there's two plays in special team area that cost us a ball game so man just the, the focus of the kids and then you know that bled over to Tuesday we put the pads on we scrimmaged for eight plays and uh, we put some kids in position we, to, on those plays, the offense and defense, going against each other. We made a little competition deal. And I mean, it was a, it was a bloodbath. And those kids were getting after it. Amelia was one of those kids. Drake Welch was playing on the defensive side of the ball. Caden Hunter was playing running back. And there was, it was like a game situation. We got a lot out of that. Then from there we went to the boards and uh, that's where it's one on one with the linemen. People took Trevor on and Brendan on and, and those guys are they're stout on those boards and we we had just had a little driving session and it, it it was more physical than I had been in the past few years. Well, you, you got a loss and a great week of practice and a big win and it was uh, carrying through for you. I hope so. Well, Coach Williams, I'll be back with more pregame coverage and look at this week's opponent, the Lockney Longhorns. Uh, Coach, before we go on uh, to look at this week's opponent, Lockney, just a couple of quick, uh, more quick things from last week. I, for, I think I know the answer to my question, but for the benefit of those who might not, and actually I've had several people ask me, as though I should know, uh, since last Friday night, it, tell us exactly how it works in a game like what we had last Friday night, a lopsided score, how and when the decision is made to run the clock through the end of the game. Well, you know, it, it's supposed to be a mutual consent between coaches. Now when you play at someone's place that would like to run the clock, then it's pretty much whatever they want to do and your, your hands are tied. But say for example the Wellington deal, uh, you know, when you start feeling like you're in a position that you, you've got some things that you need to look at, you've got those done, you've got the kids some touches, you've, you've, you've blocked well and you've thrown the ball, the things that you need to work on, you've got that done. Then, then the game starts turning into where you might get somebody hurt, right. or they might get somebody right. hurt, or where you, you, you know, in, in my case, where you're embarrassing an opponent. I don't want, you know, I don't want to embarrass anybody. And uh, you know, I just got the feeling at the time we were fixing to head the other direction that when we were at 41 points, and so. So you make that overture to the other coach? Well, he had, he had already expressed he wanted okay. to do it at the first or the second half. Okay. He said, I would like to start running the clock. And I said, well, I'll, I'll let you know. We'll, we'll take care of you. And you still had two or three minutes to go in the third quarter, right? Right, right. So we, you know, we, we felt like that we needed Jose Tellez to carry the ball a little bit more. We wanted Cade to run the ball some more. Uh, we wanted Luke to throw the ball some more. So we, we felt like we needed two more drives offensively uh, just just to work on things that we need to work on and, and, and get kids in the game. Live, I mean, yeah. Live, yeah. Live competition. And, uh, you know, uh, so so that that call was made there. Mauricio, I touched on that a little bit. Randy, I, you like to get those guys in the football. Uh, Presley Ridley, you want him to play defense. Kids like that 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 you know not necessarily had enough action. And uh, you know, when I feel like 
we've done what we need to do on that, and we're at Wellington, we're in that situation, I'll just make the call. You know, aside from when the buzzer sounded on a couple of playoff games uh, that we've done, I'm not sure I've seen a rock, Skyrocket team celebrate quite as much as when Nathan Brown made the catch and scored on that two-point conversion just before halftime. I think the videos on Facebook and Max Preps have probably already gone viral. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it was a special moment, and, and you know, uh, uh, I was speaking with Shannon Brown after the game, and uh, made the mom, and, and I told her, I said, you know what made that special was he caught that ball. He did that, he went to work on that in practice, and, and he made that special moment, and it, it was fun, it, it was great for our kids, and, and you know, you can relate that to, to Luke or, or uh, uh, Trevor or Jose. You work hard at something, you know, you're going to accomplish something. So, you know, he put some time in catching the football. We, we worked on that a little bit. Got a standing ovation from and the London he crowd. Did. And Caesar Rodriguez made a great throw. Oh, it was right in the right nose. It was. It? it was. Well, something I noticed on that video, and I really hope some other folks too, and you're going to comment about it during the broadcast, is when the Rawls quarterback, uh, number four, his name was Zane Martinez, uh, I want to call him by name, who, by the way, was having a really rough night and played a lot of the second half with some kind of leg injury that was bothering him. Martinez was the very first person to give Nathan a head slap when he made the catch. Uh, you know, only right to offer his congratulations to both teams, both coaches, for making a, a special night yeah. for everybody. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I did get a chance to speak to the kid after the game from Rawls, and I, I told him that was a special moment. We appreciate it. And he said, man, I was caught up in it just as much as you were. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was having a really he rough was. night at the office. He was. He was. He could just very, very easily have been resentful of where they stood at that time. They were great sports. That's great. Back to this weekend as we make the long drive down to Lockney. Uh, a lot of Skyrocket fans won't be able to make that kind of trip. Uh, oh, a, a big bunch will, but there will be some that won't. So we anticipate perhaps a normal, larger than normal listening audience. But the Longhorns come in with a 2-5 and five record overall. But, hey, they made the playoffs last year. They're going to be doing everything they can to get that number four spot. So not to be overlooked, what can we expect from them? Well, I spoke with Jay, Coach Jay Ragland from uh, Lockney, and, you know, he's thinking in his mind, Hey, I've got a chance to get that fourth playoff spot. You know, right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything. We've got to try to get better against y'all and make some things happen. So, you know, he's still scrapping and clawing and trying to get in there. And so they're going to, you know, when they're playing on their home turf, they're going to play hard. And, um, you know, we, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. But the, you're right. They're going to they're gonna bring something to you. And they, that's, they're the kind of team, if you, if you let them hang around, they'll get better. And if I understood you right, the attack will see something similar to what Rawls did. You're going to see a lot of spread. And, uh, they're due to injuries. They've gone to some doubles, two receivers. Uh, and so they've gone to this double set, and their, their quarterback is most, in my opinion, is their most talented athlete. And sometimes they'll stick him out, out wide throwing the football. A lot of times they'll bring those guys in motion and distract you and try to run the counter tray off that. It is a lot similar to what we've seen a couple of weeks. Yeah, we saw more jet sweeps than we've seen in a long time last week. You're exactly right. I had seen, you know, we didn't see that hardly any last year now. You know, they're everywhere. So. Well, once again, before, uh, lest we forget to mention them, since we last talked, uh, your JV kids had another great outing, a 26-6 win over Wheeler. And of course, we're recording this early in the week before uh, before the Thursday night games, but uh, that big win at Wheeler, that was with a change of quarterback with JoJo McKnight stepping in for John Michael Holcomb and playing really well. How about that? You know, he, he did a good job, and, you know, we kept doing exactly what we do, and, and uh, Man, I, uh, JoJo picked it up well, and I, I thought he did an outstanding job. You know, I've seen JoJo run, but I've never seen him throw the ball. He's all gone. He did a pretty he good did job. He did good, and, you know, we, we, we got quarterbacks running out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We're fixed for a while. Yeah. Hey, Coach, thanks again for spending some time with us. We want to wish you all the best come Friday night. I appreciate it, man.